Hello, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order, please? Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't want to get involved. I don't do that stuff anymore. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. Hold on to your butts. And that is why Damon Wayans supported Bill Cosby during his rape allegations. What are you doing here? a shoe honestly <sighs> this pain hurts but it's nowhere near the amount of pain that's inflicted by this piece of shit just look at this fucking cover from one of the writers of batman begins yeah way to cherry pick guys this movie is less batman begins and more kickboxer 2 the road back david david i see no fat lady i hear no singing so it's not over yet concentrate the most fierce weapon is the human mind. Now go kick his ass and let's go home! Ugh. Let's just get this over with. The first thing you're going to notice about the movie, besides the quality of course, is that it stars David Hasselhoff. Man, I should have a David Hasselhoff joke here. <laughs> Got nothing. The movie starts off in a cryogenics lab, probably the one holding Walt Disney's corpse, as an army private somehow has access to the Hydra leader Baron Von Strucker, as a group of stock footage races to his location. Bunch of slack-jawed faggots around here. This stuff will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. Just like me. Roger, Hydra 2. First rendezvous complete. Baron Wolfgang von Strucker. Last of the great global boogeymen. Ours not to reason why, ours but to do and die. Ah, damn it, that guy only had two days till retirement. So the global terrorist organization known as Hydra has taken over the cryogenics lab in order to steal back the body of Baron Von Strucker. But the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent isn't ready to give up the fight just yet. Let us rock! And let us roll! <laughs> what the fuck was that? Nick! Take care of her. Isn't that sweet? His last words. Anyway, we cut to somewhere in the Yukon territory where we meet Nick Fury. Nick Fury, miner of S.H.I.E.L.D. That is just disappointing, Hollywood. Why do you keep whitewashing these African American roles? Yeah, for some reason Fury is mining in the Yukon for some reason after leaving S.H.I.E.L.D. and the agency has sent in two more agents to pick him up. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. I would have believed it more if a T-Rex had come over that hill. Honestly, I can't tell what he's chewing more of, the scenery or that cigar. <laughs> Sir! Shield agent at Alexander Goodwin Pierce! Alexander Pierce? Wait, this Alexander Pierce? Jeez, talk about your foreshadowing. This is Contessa Valentina de Allegro Fontaine. Try saying that three times fast. Who shows up to inform Fury that Hydra is back. And they kill Clay in the process. I'm sorry about Clay, Nick, but it looks like Hydra's trying to send you a message. Looks like I heard it. Come on, don't you know you don't hassle the Hoff? So Val and Pierce recover Fury and take him back to Shield's headquarters in the helicarrier. Infrared retina scanner is engaged. Elevator Why are we moving? Number three. Uh, my master code, uh, alert. Zero, zero, nine, four. Pierce! Do not repeat. Do not use this elevator. Fury 
come on. Elevators don't work that way. Unless you've got power! <laughs> oh yeah, I went there. In the span of a moment, we're introduced to two more characters, Kate Neville and Tim Dugan. Oh, movie, sorry. Looks like you dropped these names right here. And yes, that is supposed to be Dumb Dumb Dugan. It's so easy to tell, right? I mean, with his amazing bowler hat and big mustache. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and introduce one more. This is Jack Pincer, the new Director General of S.H.I.E.L.D. Well, I'm not surprised, Pincer. Guys like you tend to cling to the vault no matter how many times you flush. Hey, watch your step, Fury. I had your pink slip before and I can do it again. You're going down, Fury. All your experience and your Avengers won't amount to hell and beans in this crazy world, see? In true spy movie fashion, we do get a gadget scene. The hand grip is key to your thermal signature alone, so anybody tries to fire it, boom, they'll get it in the neck. Lawgiver 2, 25 round sidearm with mission variable voice programmed ammunition. Is that? That's our prototype LMD, life model decoy. Not a bad looking guy, huh? Not a bad looking guy, huh? I'd... I'd like to be left alone with the robot, please. So they explain that Stroker's kids, Andrea and Warner, played by Sandra Hess, who you may recognize from Mortal Kombat and Annihilation, and Scott Hendley, who you may recognize from... some stuff, are recovering their father's body because it has some kind of super virus in its DNA. Anyway, we see Strucker's kids as they gloat about how they're the greatest and most evil and blah 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 and you've heard all this before, why am I even bothering? Besides, only thing I can think about right now is the fact that there's all these albino Morpheus clones running around. Then let this moment be a call to arms for each and every one of you. We are the soldiers of anarchy and it is time that the world feared us once again! Of course! Sorry, sorry, I had to. So Fury and Val head to Berlin where they meet up with Gwyneth Paltrow from Sky Captain, so Kate can use her special powers on him. Wait, wait, so she has the ability to see stock footage? Kate, are you Get him out of here now! <gasps> Don't worry, we'll get him out of here. I have never seen anything so evil. I have. At night, I can still hear the ice puns echoing in my dreams. Kick some ice. Polly here manages to get Fury alone when, surprise! <laughs> 20,000 votes, Fury. So much for the late, great Colonel Nick Fury. Have you done to me? You've been kissed with the kiss of death. So they analyze Fury's vitals, noting that the virus will kill him in 48 hours, but Fury has a job to do before that happens. And you and I both know where this is going because we have seen Escape from L.A. Oh my god, it's so fucking obvious when you look at the comparisons. A one-eyed, tough-as-nails operative is injected with a virus and still has to save the day. For crying out loud, Val even looks like Valeria Galino's character. <sighs> Luckily, there's a cure. Andrea's blood. I'll get that vampire's blood if I have to suck it from her neck. In the meantime, an LMD manages to sneak on board to deliver a message. virus has been set to explode somewhere in Manhattan. You have until 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time tomorrow to assemble 1 billion U.S. dollars. So S.H.I.E.L.D. spends a lot of time talking about the virus, Hydra's plan, that half the agency is going to look for the bomb, that Fury is going to look for Hydra, and Jesus Christ, can we please get off this fucking helicarrier? No takers, Spencer. Get you on a rebound. Don't you dare cut me off, you comic book! So Val's team tries tracking down a truck carrying the weapon using the same system that the government used to find Johnny Five. Go. 
party. What? No. No, it's not happening again. It's not happening again. Meanwhile, Fury's team is looking for Von Strucker when suddenly their plane is targeted by Hydra missiles. There's no use coming that closing. Sir, the possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1. Never tell me the odds. <laughs> Instead of finding out what happened to Fury, we cut the shield looking for the missiles. Enhance. 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 Just print the damn thing! Okay, Val, we got one last possible on the screen now, but it's moving away from Manhattan. Meanwhile, we found out that Fury and his crew survived, are you really that surprised, and are ready to go kick some Hydra butt. Let's go kick some Hydra butt. Ah, uh, wait, no time for that. The movie has to cut back to Val tracking down the strangers from Dark City. As soon as we are set up, I will call the island and let them know we are operational. Yeah, and ask them if some money has been paid. Oh wait, fuck that, never mind. We're back to Fury breaking into Hydra's base. Bloody hell. You aren't such an idiot. I would suspect you for treason. So they get captured, and of course, she doesn't finish them off, instead wanting to toy with them. You bore me, Fury. This bores me. <laughs> Meanwhile, Val and her team have successfully tracked down the missile's location, pointing directly at... Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not comfortable making fun of this. So Fury uses an explosive hidden in his false eye to actually break out of the cell. Take cover. I see what you did there. No? I'm sorry. And while they go confront Strucker, Val and her team seems to have wandered into a Doctor Who set. But they do manage to secure the missiles. Head nurse to surgeon. Operation over. Patient sedated. But, oh no, the missiles can be activated remotely. Word from Nick. No, not a word. We've kept all the channels open, but all the frequencies are dead. Well, then so are we. Along with the entire population of Greater New York. Oh my god, stop showing that! Oh, thank god, a commercial break. Fury manages to make it to Andrea despite his illness. Hey. You underestimated an old man! I wouldn't do that, Doc. Those things have a way of backfiring. You touch that, it'll take your arm off. So Fury actually gets shot by Andrea, but hold on, it turns out it was an LMD the whole time. And he manages to save Pierce and Kate with more gunfire. He's like the Fonz of guns, really. Don't worry about it, kid. You know he's even uglier than I remember. You're frozen pop sickle. Get it, Andrea? Pop sickle? Man, that is a terrible joke, but I have heard worse. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! It's all in your head. It's all in your head. It's not really happening. So now the only way to get the abort code is to get Andrea to tell him. So Kate uses her powers again to look into her mind. You're our only chance. The numbers. I need the numbers. Ever see that scene in Scanners when that dude's head blew up? All right, Kate. You can do this. You can do this. So Kate manages to pull the code out of Andrea's head, and the group manages to save New York City. But we are still not through yet. No, we still have to wrap up Fury's illness. But while that's going on, another countdown starts, which allows Andre and her father to get away complete with the cryo tube. Oh my god, he's freezing himself. It'll only take a few moments for your body to start metabolizing the anti serum. Thanks, Kate. You were damn close that time. Yeah. Yes, he almost acted. So the movie wraps up with Fury and Val looking out into the sunset. A job well done.
good God, this movie eats. If you couldn't tell, this was a Fox made-for-TV film, which should be apparent with all the fades for a commercial break. Then there are the absurd visual special effects and close-ups. That should easily give it away. The movie came out in 1998 and actually finished fourth in ratings during its premiere, losing out to the second half of Titanic for one example, and to Jag in another. The Kopolov Company, the talent agency, actually pitched quite a few Marvel properties during the 90s, only two of which were made, the 1990s Captain America and the never-released 1994 Roger Corman's Fantastic Four. Make no mistake, Hasselhoff is the best part of this movie, but even he can't save this piece of shit. Well, this movie did teach me one thing. How to deal with bad electronics. Wait, wait. I never got to do a real Hasselhoff joke. You done good, Hasselhoff. You done Ow. Close enough! Not a bad looking guy, huh? Not a bad looking guy, huh?